Ready to move on to the park operation? All right, Alan. Okay, what I have in front of you is basically what we're responsible. I don't have dollar figures on any and everything. Just a layout for you folks to look and see what we do and what needs to take place. I'll start with the north end of the community and make my way through the city. Rivermont, uh, I know that's probably out somewhere on here, but uh, we need to begin with, I'm hearing things with the status of the building and the playground. It is a neighborhood park. Folks are far appreciating your park, and uh, whatever tends to happen, certainly open communication with the folks and that facility and uh, the plans for it. Uh, my idea, and I've spoken to Richard, and of course BB and all us talk, but if we can't make things work out, uh, we wouldn't. None of us would want that in our neighborhood. So, uh, knock it down for a big concrete pad so the helicopter can land. Uh, because regardless of what we decide to do with the facility up there, we have to consider the helicopter like our team. That is a landing zone for a month later. So, uh, uh, that's the big uh, item there. The reservoir is basketball court. I've uh, had that on the list for going on 26 years. And the, we've, we've done well with our little ball field up there. We have a nice playground. We accomplished that through a uh, housing, Department of Housing grant many years ago. Probably need to look at upgrading the little restaurant facility that we've got up there, but it, it is a very nice uh, neighborhood park. Uh, the Judah Watson Center, we have rehabilitated the boiler. It come with an old building, so at some point in time, we're gonna have to give serious consideration to that, how we're gonna heat the building, and we're gonna continue with the boiler system, painting. Uh, we need to get a coat of paint on a lot of things around the windows. We have windows that need to be replaced. Uh, when you get somebody up on the roof, Alan is not a roof guy, so he's not gonna go up yonder and walk around. The last roof he was on, they had to get the bucket truck to get him off the <coughs> bathhouse at City Playground. Uh, we uh, have began, begun the development of our playground, and with the development of the playground, uh, Certainly see the uh, a potential basketball court, potential shelter, potential bathroom facility. Uh, and with that being said, you'll need a parking lot. So when you get up to the cul-de-sac, you'll want to take and go across the cul-de-sac and cut that area back a little bit so you can create some parking because if we, as we move forward developing the park, that's quite a climb and there's no parking in the rear of the building to the steps and all that good stuff. Uh, uh, thank you for the contribution to the playground up yonder, to the kids that have had a chance. Of course, we got on bad weather, but it's a nice, a really nice setup. And uh, we've gotten high praise from uh, Virginia Parks and Recreation as well as game time for the project we pulled off. <coughs> the depot, uh, of course, I mentioned the red building, but both of the buildings down there, much like a lot of things in Covington, once it's done, Allen inherits it, so uh, that's mine. Uh, we've done a very nice job with the grounds down there. Uh, we continue to power wash the building to do the best we can with the pigeons. Uh, we have recently done some painting around the windows down there on both of the buildings. Uh, we're getting closer to doing more major painting with uh, the white building particularly. But the red building has become a place of gathering. Uh, some don't like the way we decorate, but others do. But we have done very well with, with that, and I compliment Lisa. Uh, we, we sometimes book twice on Saturday and Sunday, and we're in and out making things work for the next group. But there is a challenge for those that have accessible challenges in life, and I, I think we can make it work with a concrete ramp down there at the Red Building to help folks out. And as you go down there, and if you look at the, the entrance going up and coming back down, all that concrete down there is all two pieces, and it does need, need some attention. Uh, but the, the building itself has been a, uh, a nice resource to our community. We, we entertain folks at uh, this time of year at the rec center, i.e. the old armory, and uh, the depot for $50 to have little gatherings. We, uh, had a wedding down there last Friday night. I think we have another wedding this weekend. So lots of different activities are going on in, in that building. 
Main Street Park. We have got to look at the condition of the road down there, uh, the playground equipment, the shelter, restroom facility is all not more than 26 years old. And uh, the nice thing about that, me mentioning that this needs to be looked at for replacement is it has been well used. There's not a park in our system that is not well used by residents and neighbors and, and things of that nature. Uh, pool plastering is right around the corner. Uh, your Covington Municipal Pool uh, is now 2006, 18, 12, will knock on 15 years. And, and we've done some plastering of the zero entry where there's just a lot of folks that gather. We've, we've done that. But the large part of the pool is it's knocking on the door, and that's probably a, uh, a twenty twenty-five thousand dollar project. But uh, the one thing that we can take a little smile about is we are the only uh, municipal pool in the Allegheny Highlands, and it does get a lot of use. And it, over the last couple of years, each year we've increased dollars, and from the for what it's worth, I know we work on the a physical I do calendar with my, our swimming pool, but last year we were pretty close to twenty-nine and a half, twenty-eight and a half, twenty-nine thousand dollars. Mind you, it's only open from Memorial Weekend to about the first weekend in August. And if it rains and things like that, that certainly puts a hurting on us. We probably taught 75 kids plus to swim last summer. And we have pool parties that start August the 1st and by August the 2nd are booked. So, uh, We've, we've done well with our municipal pool. Uh, we've stayed on top of our maintenance there. I've got a little bit of painting to do on the inside, but outside of the plaster, which is just heavy use, uh, we're, we're in very good shape down there. Casey Field, Booty Opera Stadium. Uh, you all have heard the song and dance before, but uh, at some point in time, you're going to have to address the field renovations. Uh, for those that have not had a chance to walk across Casey Field, the next time you pull into Wendy's, you'll see what's happening under the parking lot there. That's basically the same kind of material that's at Casey Field. It's a landfill, and it's settling extremely bad. Uh, when you drive down Craig Street, it's pretty. I'll be the first one to tell you it's pretty. Uh, but when you're out there playing tackle and catching ground balls, it's it's a little different story. And the right fielder is the one in baseball that's suffering the most because if he's following that ball, he's going to hit some really low spots. A wheelbarrow, a load of soil doesn't cut it anymore. It's, it's outside of, of that. Uh, the stadium, uh, Stevie and I have made visitations down there and, and we've got some things that <coughs> look okay, but Again, you're talking about a facility that was built in, uh, well, games were played September 1962. And outside of what Alan Dressler and his staff have done to the park, that's basically been it. Uh, the stadium, the bleachers, we've still not replaced uh, some that uh, were blown away from the Derecia. You've got the wood planks underneath of them are starting to, to rot, so when one breaks, we fix that piece. And, move on, but uh, uh, all, all the bleachers on the stadium need to be replaced. Uh, you, if you hadn't already heard, you probably would <coughs> there is the desire for a, a walk rail to go up and down the stadium. That is a real challenge in the middle of the stadium. We certainly could help folks on the sides of each row and then they would have to walk across, uh, but it becomes a hazard when you have a rail going down, up and down the middle of the steps uh, to everyone one else. So we may be able to look at a handrail on each far side of the stadium to help you get up and then you'll have to walk across whatever seat you want to sit in. Uh, the stadium when it was built, it was built by local contractors in good faith. And for those that have been up and down the stadium, if you see the individual blocks in between the steps, they, that was an add-on. That was not done when they built the stadium. Uh, so it took some long-legged people to get up and down Casey Field back in 1962. Uh, the press box up on the football stadium, uh, Allen's done a lot of nice things to it and cleaned it up and, and it is functional. But again, it's getting old and tired. 
the baseball side of things are in pretty good shape. We've done some paving over there. Uh, later on, I'll mention the bleachers, but the portable bleachers that are provided for football season and back to baseball and back to football are, uh, I know they're at least 26 years old and they've had a lot of travel distance and they're starting to snap cracker and pop. So uh, we'll need to certainly look at that. And your parking lots. Uh, both parking lots are in horrible condition. Uh, the one on the baseball side, we, we did that in-house many years ago and it's just, it, it's horrible with drainage problems and if we ever address the drainage situation on Royal, the uh, train and the trees and all that, with this needs to go, we just need to clean all that up. Uh, you have a nice facility down there. It's, it, it's in a good place. Uh, not knowing what the future of schools are, but that's certainly your favored athletic facility. Uh, and if you want to dress it up, and I know that there's been some interest from uh, perhaps the Allegheny Foundation about seeing some things that maybe are a little snazzy, but uh, the little rod arm fence that we did at Dr. Ellis Gate, you could do that type of fence all the way around and make nice columns coming in and out with all your entrances to your facility down there. And, uh, and it would be nice. It would be real nice. And it, would, it is a showcase facility. It didn't win a national award in 1996-97 because it wasn't going to be. So, uh, the only thing I we, we didn't mention, Alan, you and I talked about the evaluation of air change in the water. That is beginning tomorrow. Excellent. I'm glad you brought that up. We are, uh, you folks are giving me a little bit of money to do some things within uh, the locker room facility and uh, the contract has been awarded. Contractor starts tomorrow and hopefully over the next couple of weeks we will have a good air exchange, uh, heat, uh, air conditioning and a dehumidifier system that will suck the sweat out of the uniforms and if they get a red spot it won't be the city of Covington. So, uh, we we have a nice system set up to accommodate what we what we have down there. So we appreciate that. Much. Yes, sir. Skate park. I don't know when the last time y'all went down there. Uh, Mr. Zimmerman and I put the skate park together back in 1996. Uh, we did a skate park for about twelve thousand dollars. So what you see set down there is twelve fifteen thousand dollar investment. Uh, he and I got the kids together at the school and they told us what they desired and Alan pulled it off. It is tired. It is rotting. I have replaced boards. I have done sheet metal work. Uh, there's no more Tony Hawks out there in the world, and I can count skaters now on probably two fingers. Uh, it used to be 20 plus a day down there. So uh, we need to make a decision because it is a liability to us down there. there. It's a liability. So, uh, and it has served its time. Uh, and, and our park, from the, ki the kids in Roanoke used to come over and skate our park because we had the cool park, uh, unlike theirs. Uh, unfortunately, the boards went and spent $100,000 on the skate park, I believe. And then they put a lock a chain around it not too long after that. We had a nice buy-in with our kids and our police department all working together, and we had a friendly skate park. But the decision has to be made, and it may not be the most favorable decision amongst two or three or four or five kids, but uh, my recommendation as we sit here today is uh, eliminate it and we move on to something else down there. The Covington Recreation Center, the uh, what everybody refers to as the armory, uh, we're having problems with the bowler as we speak. Uh, the roof, uh, Eric has helped me some on the roof and the, and the bus parking lot. Uh, I would not want that parking lot in my neighborhood, and we do a good job as we can to clean things up, but when they park 15 buses down there and I can't get around to do anything, uh, but we really need to go in there, get, uh, maybe at the schools out, and I get Bonnie and Joe and uh, Tyler to pull all the buses out, and we can get a contractor in there, and the home next door to the parking lot decided to let a great big tree grow through our fence, and it's just, it's a mess. Uh, I have two vehicles, uh, I think in fact there's one vehicle and a scooter that was apprehended by the, uh, our local police department for somebody that had done something bad and it was only going to be there a day and ten years later it's still there. So uh, again, I wouldn't want that out my front door, so uh, we certainly need to address that. High Tower Park in very good shape, uh, restroom facility probably is getting tired. 
uh, use some upgrades. Fort Young Park, uh, a hidden gem in the city of Covington, a very, very nice park. Uh, parking improvements uh, need to be uh, made over there. The Helen Childs Wildflower Garden. Uh, I have worked with several folks that have a lot of interest in the Wildflower Garden, and I don't know that it's gotten to where they hoped it would be. It's nowhere near where Alan Dressler would like it to be, uh, but it's something that we seem to have interest in the Allegheny Highlands with these kinds of places, and there may come a point in time in the next six years and one long day that Alan says, ladies, it's going to take a roundup, and I'll let you know when it's done. But it's something that needs to be addressed. The white pine stand behind the armory. Uh, don't know if y'all pay much attention to it, Ken, when you're on the interstate. <coughs> My assumption is that belongs to us. And at some point in time, in our childhood, somebody went in there with a bunch of white pine seedlings and planted them, and they're starting to fall from the flesh. Uh, we need to take a look, make for sure, is it ours? And then perhaps get involved with a uh, somebody that cuts wood that can go in there and do a nice thinning, perhaps, and tie that in with the Helen Child's Wildflower Garden as a nice trail at the park. So, uh, but take a look, see next time you're cruising off the interstate coming into Covington, and we'll look to your right at that uh, white pine stand, and you'll see the trees that are starting to fall. And again, it's just, it was it was a great concept. We planted all these trees and we stuck them in the ground and nobody took care of them after the fact. And now they're to the point where they need, need some attention. <clears throat> Nettleton Park, not sure one last time any of you folks are down there, but we've done some nice things with the dugouts and the nice things with the ball field. Uh, we need to improve the, the parking situation down there on the lower end of the, of the park. Uh, the basketball court, uh, the kids, that's been another one of those that's been on the list for 26 years. Uh, what would be the smart thing to do if you fix the basketball court and tie it in with a asphalt parking and it's all becomes one and kids can go down there and shoot and hoop and we can use it for <coughs> parking and so forth during our, our ball game. I do have concern with uh, the creek that's coming down out of the mountain there and as the high waters gets up, it's cutting into left field and it's eroding pretty bad and at some point in time, it probably was within the rules of the game many, many years ago, but whenever we had access concrete, we just took it down there and we dumped it on the bank, and that's taboo. So now where all the concrete's at and the water's gotten in behind the concrete, it has eroded all of that out. So there, there will be a point in time within the next few years that you're going to need to address some bank stabilization out in the uh, left field area. You still got a little bit of a walkway, so anytime folks are down that way, you want to get out, just get out. And see what I'm talking about. <coughs>